Hello, this is Reverend Molly McGee with Horseshoe Drive United Methodist Church. Today is Ash Wednesday, February 17th, 2021. And if you're in Louisiana, it's a day to stay inside. It's a day of more freezing rain and possibly bad weather and power outages. So we just say our prayers for all those who are stuck in the cold, who have to get out today, who, who are without power all over this country, especially in Texas. We just pray for those who need warmth and comfort and that they get the help they need this day. And for the rest of us, this is a day of prayer and penitence. Mardi Gras was yesterday. I hope you had a wonderful Mardi Gras. And today, not that we shouldn't have a good Ash Wednesday, but today begins a day where we focus on Lent and how we are before Christ how we are before Christ. And Ash Wednesday is a day we look at our sinfulness, done out of shame or bitterness, but a day to look within and say, you know what? I'm not perfect. And I'm not exactly as I should be for the sake of Jesus Christ. I'm not being the person that God created me to be. So I want to be a little bit better. So as we continue with this prayer service, I have um, first a Christ candle here that I like to invite the Christ light in with us so we remember that Christ is always with us as we pray. And I have also here my ashes. It's not ashes, it's just a bit of dirt from a house plant and a drop of oil. If you have oil, any kind of bath oil, co cooking oil is fine or something, a bit of dirt is fine, a bit of dust from your house is fine. If not, nothing's fine. When the time comes, we'll just mark across on our foreheads. And that's what's important here is the symbol of the cross. The ashes remind us of our sinfulness and our brokenness, that we are not perfect and there is something that might need to change within us. But the symbol of the cross that we place with those ashes, with that dirt, is to remind us that Christ has overcome that, that Christ will pull us through. And that's why we take the season of Lent to remember First off, on Ash Wednesday, our mortality, that we are broken, that without Christ, we are nothing. But then with Christ, we have the glory of Easter that is yet to come. So we spend these days in prayer. We spend these days studying scripture. We spend these days opening our hearts to God, letting the God who lives within us come out and letting us who lives with God go in so that we can connect and build that re relationship in a much more deep and personal and beautiful way. And that's why we have this special celebration. It's not a celebration, the special occasion to mark this day. So I ask you just to sit back now, relax, and enter into this time of prayer. We're going to read some scripture. If you have your Bible, we're going to read from Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to read from Psalm 51, but I'm going to share my screen now and allow you to read and pray along with me for this Ash Wednesday. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter six, one through six. Be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven. Whenever you give to the poor, don't blow your trumpet as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may get praise from people. I assure you that's the only reward they'll get. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that you may give to the poor in secret. Your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that people will see them. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you pray, go to your room, shut the door and pray to your father who is present in that secret place. Your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the, this gospel, Matthew's just calling us back to the basis of our faith, to pray, to give to the poor to do this not as the hypocrites do, to do it for, for attention or for praise, but to do it because it is deep within our soul. It is deep what we want it to be. 
a true relationship with the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not about other people. It's not about what they see or what they think we're doing. It's about us alone with God, and that is all. So that's why this Jesus is telling the disciples, do this. Do this when you're alone. Do this in private. Do this for the sake of God and your relationship with God and nothing and for no other reward. On Ash Wednesday, our prayer of confession is always Psalm 51. If you'd like, you can read along with me. You can read the parts in bold. I will read it all through. But this is our prayer of confession. This is our prayer that says we are sinful. Lord, cleanse us and, and put a right spirit within us. So let us pray. Have mercy on me, God, according to your faithful love. Wipe away my wrongdoings according to your great compassion. Wash me completely, clean of my guilt. Purify me from my sin. Because I know my wrongdoings, my sin is always right in front of me. I've sinned against you, you alone. I've committed evil in your sight. That's why you are justified when you render your verdict, completely correct when you issue your judgment. Yes, I was born in guilt, in sin, from the moment my mother conceived me. And yes, you want truth in the most hidden places. You teach me wisdom in the most secret space. Purify me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and celebration again. Let the bones you crushed rejoice once more. Hide your face away from my sins. Wipe away all my guilty deeds. Create a clean heart for me, God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach wrongdoers your ways and sinners will come back to you. Deliver me from violence, God, God of my salvation, so that my tongue can sing of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. You don't want sacrifices. If I gave an entirely burned offering, you wouldn't be pleased. A broken spirit is my sacrifice, God. You won't despise a heart, God, that is broken and crushed. Amen. And God wants our broken spirit. Again, this is not a spirit of shame, but this is a spirit of repentance that says, yes, Lord, I admit I've done wrong. I admit that I have not lived the best of my ability for you, but I am willing to make those changes, Lord. And this psalm, this prayer just calls out to God saying, change me from within. Give me a clean heart. Change my heart, oh God, and let me be as you have created me to be. And this is the blessing in which we live today as the people of Christ. So at this time, if you have your ashes ready or a bit of oil, go ahead and get them ready as I read the prayer over the ashes. If you don't have it, that's okay too. That's okay. Just mark a cross on your forehead. Brothers and sisters in Christ, early Christians developed the custom of the church that before Easter, the celebration there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During the season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you therefore in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now before our creator and redeemer Pray over our ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may put, be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, amen.
if you will, mark a cross on your forehead. And as you do, say, repent and believe the gospel. This, this is, these are the words of Ash Wednesday, but the words of all of our Lent, that we are called back to Christ to repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you today and over these next 40 days until we get to the joy of Easter, take this time as we journey together to the cross with Jesus, as we journey together on a, a plan of spiritual renewal and spiritual growth so that we get back to the basics of our faith, that we get back to scripture reading and prayer, even fasting, not food fasting necessarily, but just getting back to giving up those things that keep us from God, whatever that may be for you. If something keeps up, keeps you from God, if something takes up your time more than it should, it might be a time to walk away from that for these 40 days. If you choose to give something up for Lent, that's good. Do it. But keep in mind, these are about deep personal changes. These are not about, I'm going to challenge myself to do something for 40 days to see if I can do it. Those are good things. But for this time, it's about reconnecting with your spirit and finding that time for God and making deep changes within that help us connect to God, not just for 40 days, but for the rest of our lives. Go today with peace, go with love, and go spend time with your most beautiful, holy, one true God. Amen. Amen.